Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio and in our last video we got things set up so that you can now go to a quest board in order to see available quests. That said, we can't do much with them, so in this video we're just going to set things up so that you can accept or decline the quests and have them enter your quest log. That's where we're headed in this video, let's get started. Alright, so since our accepting and declining quests is going to be happening through buttons or UI, let's head into our quest log UI to set this up. Last video we created the show quest offer method in order to show our quests. Let's come down below that and make a method for accepting and declining. We'll call the first on accept quest clicked. And here we just want to start by talking to our quest manager and telling it that we want to accept this quest and we'll pass along the quest SO. Don't worry that it won't like that for now as we haven't created it yet. Now along with calling accept quest in the quest manager we also just want to change the state of our buttons. So let's set the canvas state for our complete canvas, turning it off as well as for our decline canvas group. Next, let's create a public void method for on decline quest clicked. This one's going to be really simple as if we decline it, we just simply want to close the quest board. So we can just set the canvas state for the quest canvas to false. Let's get rid of those red squiggly lines by heading over to quest manager and actually creating an accept quest method. Remember, this is going to need to take in a quest scriptable object, which we'll just call quest so. Now you may remember that we have this super dictionary up here called Quest Progress, which for all of its keys holds specific quests, and then matched with each of those keys is a dictionary that holds the objectives and our current progress. We want to access that and add an entry for the quest we've just accepted. So we'll look in the Quest Progress Super Dictionary, get an entry for this quest O. So this will just be a new dictionary with no objectives or integers for progress put into it yet. We'll then come down below and we're going to want to fill that information in case, say we already have two of the three mushrooms we need. So what we just want to do now is for each objective that we find in our quest SO's list of objectives, we'll want to update the objective progress using that method we created earlier. Here we'll pass along the quest SO as well as the specific objective we're looking at. That way we'll not just make a new entry in our super dictionary, but also fill it with the latest information about our progress. So now if we head back to our quest log UI, we can see that on accept quest clicked is now happy with us. Now the next thing we need to do is actually find a way to call these different methods and we'll do that with our buttons. That said, let's just quickly set up a on complete quest clicked method and even though we're not going to fill it with any logic, just set it up so that we can hook the buttons up while we do the others. Alright, back in Unity then, let's go to our accept button, find our button component and for the on clicked listener here, let's go ahead and add one. We can then drag in our quest log UI script from the quest log and just tell it that whenever it's clicked on, we want to call the on accept quest clicked method. We'll then do the same idea for decline and for complete. Now when we get in the game, we can open things up and we hit decline. It does in fact close the quest board and we can hit accept and well, that didn't quite work right with the buttons. I made a little mistake there. That said, we have now added this to our dictionary. However, as you can see, there's no visual way to tell it's been added to our dictionary. So next, we want to make sure that this interacts with our actual log. Let's just first fix that little problem we had with our buttons. I just did this backwards as it's the accept canvas group we want to turn off after clicking it. That way we can't accept it a second time. We'll actually leave decline active. That way we can use it to close the menu once we're done. All right, that's working much better now. We can use accept and the accept button disappears. And then just for the moment, at least we're going to use decline as a way to close the menu. Now, next, we really do need some visual feedback so that we can tell we've actually added this quest to our log. To do this, we're going to have to look at our quest log slots. Now, currently we have this on validate method that allows us to drag and drop in different quests. And then it calls the set quest method. We're not going to want to do that anymore as we want to make it so that our quests are actually set by things like the quest board or NPCs who give us quests. So we're going to want to talk to set quest, but additionally we're going to want to make a new public method called clear slot, which will enable us to actually clear quests that have been completed or that we throw away. Whenever we call this method, we just want to set it so that this slot's current quest is null. And then finally, we're just going to turn the game object off by setting its activeness to false. Now that our quest slots are equipped to set and clear the data that's inside of them, let's head back to our quest log UI where we can actually call those methods. In our accept quest, we want to add something new called a refresh quest list. And we also want to do this anytime we complete a quest so that we can be adding and taking away quests from our log. Let's now come down below our set canvas state and create that method. This will be a public void method called refresh quest list. 
Now in order to refresh those quests, we're going to actually need to make a list of all the active quests. So let's make a list of quest SOs called active quests. And here we're just going to need to talk to our quest manager and actually get the active quests. Again, we've not created that method yet, so let's do that now. If this seems a little like logic overkill to you, we're just trying to keep a separation of concerns here where the quest log UI is concerned only with updating UI and taking inputs from the UI, while the quest manager handles all the actual logic to do with the quest themselves. So now, in our quest manager, we're gonna make a public method, but rather than returning void or nothing, we're gonna make this method return a list of quest SOs. Let's call this get active quests. We just need one line inside here, and whatever we call this, we're going to return a new list of quest scriptable objects. Now we need to get those objects, so we're going to look inside the quest progress super dictionary and just grab all of the keys. Remember, a dictionary is made up of key value pairs, and in this case, the keys are the quest scriptable objects, and then the value is the actual dictionary that holds all its objectives, which we don't need just now, as we just need those keys. Our quest log UI now has the ability to collect a list of all the quest SOs that are currently active. However, right now we have no way to interact with all of the quest log slots. So let's come up top here and create a serialized private field of quest log slots. And we're going to make this an array so we can drag as many slots as we want in here. Now then, whenever we accept or complete a quest and call this refresh quest list method, we're going to first of all get a list of all our active quests. But now what we want to do is use a for loop to go through all of the quest slots that we have and either turn them on or off. So first of all, we'll ask an if question. If i, which is the slot we're currently looking at, is less than the active quest count. So for example, if i is zero and there is one active quest, that means we've got a quest to put on this slot. In that case, we wanna get this quest slot. So we'll use the i representing say zero, and we're gonna set its quest equal to active quests zero or one or two or three, depending on which slot we're looking at. Now we also want to have a situation for what happens if there is no active quest to put on this slot. Well, if that's the case, we just want to get quest slot i, the one we're currently looking at, and then we'll call that clear slot method that we made earlier, which will both empty out the quest SO for that slot and turn the slot off. Now we have a little work to do in Unity, so let's click on our quest log, and you'll notice there's now a spot here for our quest slots. Let's lock the inspector, we can then open up our quest log, go to the quest slots, and use shift click to get all of them at once. Let's drag them over into that box, and there we go, we now have seven quest slots. I'll unlock the inspector. Now when we get in the game, this should be much more impressive. We can open up the quest board, click accept, and you'll notice that it gets rid of all those other quests, which we just sort of artificially put onto the slots, and only shows the quest we actually have, which is one active quest, the one we just collected. I could hit decline here to close this, open it back up, and you'll notice it's showing that quest over again. Fortunately, when I hit accept, we don't add it yet again. However, we want to clear this out so that it represents something different to show us that there are no quests available. So in order to change up our display so that when there's no quests available, it tells us that, I'm actually going to create a special quest for that. Let's look at our quest SOs here, where I'm just going to duplicate an existing one, and we'll call this one no available quests. Up top here, I'll just give it that name, no available quests, you can add whatever description you would like to show up in that place, and then I'm just going to zero out the objectives and rewards. In our quest log UI then, I'm going to make a new field, a serialized private quest SO field, which will be our no available quests SO. This is just what will hold this as a sort of fallback so that when there's no other quests to show, it will display this one. So now then, whenever we try to show a quest offer, we're first going to ask a question. We're going to ask if the quest manager here we'll do is quest accepted and pass along the incoming quest. Now we haven't created that method yet, so let's do that really quickly. It's actually just a one liner, so in the quest manager, we'll create a new public bool this time as it will return either true or false. And we'll call this one is quest accepted, and it's just going to take in the quest SO that we want to check whether we've already accepted it. We'll then return a true false value based on whether or not quest progress already contains the key of the quest SO we're looking at. If it does, it will return true, and if it does not already have that quest SO, it will return false. So then, if we try to show the quest offer by opening up the quest board, but it turns out our quest manager already accepted that quest, then what we want to do is just fill the quest SO that we'll display with the no available quest SO. Next, we'll want to decide which buttons to display, so let's copy all of our set canvas states here, and just make it so that if there is in fact no available quest, 
then we just want to turn off the accept and complete buttons. We'll leave the decline one there for now as we're using that to close the menu. We then need to account for the situation where we have not accepted the quest yet. Now first, let's cut out our set canvas states here, which will turn on the accept and decline buttons and turn off the complete one. We also want to make sure that if this is the case, we set the quest SO to be displayed as the one that was passed in as the incoming quest SO from our quest board. That way, when we call handle quest clicked, rather than always showing the incoming quest, we're going to show quest SO, which will have been evaluated as either the no available quest or the incoming one, depending on whether we've accepted this quest already. At this point, I'd encourage you to hit the save all button as we've been in and out of a number of quests and just want to make sure they're all saved. Back in Unity, let's click on our quest log and just make sure that we fill in that no available quest SO slot with the one we created earlier. At this point, we're very close to working. We can look at the quest board, accept, and our quest log updates, but you'll notice that the test quest is still there. That said, if I decline, talk to the board again, we can see that it's telling us there's no available quest. However, we want that to update a little sooner. So at the moment, the only time that we call the handle quest clicked method, which is what refreshes our UI, is here when we first show the quest offer. We want to make sure that we also do that when we accept a quest. So along with refreshing our quest logs list, we also want to handle the quest clicked, which will refresh our details. With that done now, when we get in the game, we can go to the quest board, we can click accept, it updates our log, and also tells us there's no more quests available. Alright, that's working nicely. That said, it would sure be nice if we could actually complete these quests and gain some rewards. We'll get there shortly. I hope to see you then. Until that time though, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.